And these are usually being legislated by government body, such as Congress. Like I call it Section 817, and I say you can deduct up to 20% of your assets or CNC values. Or maybe you can deduct 20% of your land due to the problems with real estate market. So I say up to 2%, you can depreciate or up to a certain amount, like 150,000. Choose this section and now this becomes the value of correction. Now, before you literally save this, you must have a priority because you may have different code. You have to give it the priority. The higher the priority is gonna actually take effect first. Another term for a special depreciation allowance is called bonus depreciation. Now I close and I rewind back to my fixed asset group. I'm pretty much done with majority of the setup. However, you have to also consider so many other things. So I like to switch to a different tab and go to fixed asset and pick and choose the fixed asset parameters. Now here, there are a few things you need to consider. Number one, would you allow multiple acquisition? Let's talk about this theoretically a bit. To begin with, assume you're buying a CNC machine and as you know, many of the CNC machines are very expensive and heavy and they're coming in multiple pieces. The policy, regardless of when you get the asset, is you receive the vendor invoice into your system. That's you. This circle is your company. And then you probably pay them somehow, either immediately or over installment plans, etc. This specific milestone, we know it as a invoicing and paying, which literally we call it a purchase. That means you purchased it. In a fixed asset terminology, if you may consider, there's a time for purchasing, which can be done via purchase order, later to be invoiced, or direct vendor invoices. However, from the moment that you claim that you have acquired this asset, is it completely different terminology here? The acquisition or acquire could be different, could be exactly at the same time, like an analogy of having a telephone to be bought or computer to be purchased from a store. Immediately as you pay for it, you can use it. That's the acquisition. However, in a case of having this specific fixed asset, which is a CNC, to not to be worried about paying the property taxes because you haven't used it yet, literally pretty heavy duty, takes a while to arrive even though you pay for it or you pay later, is it relevant? Maybe it takes a few months to be installed. Maybe it takes a few months for training your staff and test it. And then you could say is operational or is in my production. So most companies, they may not have the same timing when they purchase it, whereas claim that they have acquired that asset. Again, depending on the depreciation profile, you need to understand how would you depreciate. So there's a depreciation and then the value, which is a net book value, it should be deducted as you depreciate or it should be increased as you renovate or you own gold, the value goes up. So you have to write it up. You have no other choice or so write it down due to the problem with the economy. Then finally, you want to get rid of an asset, let's say. You can scrap it. And scrapping an asset could cost you money. Like let's say you have a bunch of hazardous waste that you have to get rid of. Or it could be something that you can make money off of. It could be a negative or plus here for scrapping. Are you getting rid of it? Or are you selling it? This is selling and this is a scrapping. But either way, is a disposal of the asset. Would you allow multiple acquisition? That means you acquired it once, you acquired it again. Example would be like a copy machine with sorter on it. Like you buy a completely different one, but you mix them as one asset or you chain them as two separate assets. Would you allow that or not? It's completely up to the discretion of the customer. 